Welcome back to the One Question Leadership Podcast. I'm Glenn Caruso, head football coach at the University of St. Thomas, and so happy you tuned in. You know, quite often we get so caught up in the daily grind of work or coaching or recruiting that we don't often take time to reflect. I would encourage everybody to take just a few minutes each day to try and see the bigger picture, to stop and realize that in the end, we're going to be judged on what we choose to believe, who we choose to love, and what we decide to leave behind in the hearts and minds of not just our players, not just our coworkers, but also our children. And remember, if we're doing it right, we're coaching football for life. Greetings, this is Ty Brown, and welcome to the One Question Leadership Podcast, where we highlight executive and organizational leadership. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at 1Q Leadership. Our guest today is Coach Kevin Hambly. Coach Hambly is the head volleyball coach at Stanford University. Greetings, Coach. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me on. It's truly an honor to be with you. Coach, you're coming up on your fourth season there at Stanford. You've won two national championships while there, three Pac-12 conference titles during that time. Prior to coming to Stanford, you were the head coach at University of Illinois for eight seasons and successful with that team and took them to a shot at the national title. And in general, you've been in the volleyball coaching profession for almost 25 years. So you have a wealth of knowledge when you talk about leadership, you talk about successful and effective leadership and organizational culture. So I'm happy to have you on today, Coach. Well, thanks for having me on. Yeah, uh, with the group of uh, people you've had on your podcast, I feel unworthy, but I appreciate it. (laughs) I doubt that. You're very worthy, Coach. Uh, I have you on for for a couple of reasons, but first I want to talk kind of about uh, culture and leadership, taking over a program such as Stanford Volleyball and just getting to Stanford Athletics is a is a is a department and specifically that volleyball program has been successful for a long time. And Stanford Volleyball is, in, for the lack of a better word, is an institution in the institution of college volleyball right and so you take over a successful program and it has its ups and ups and downs right you come in and 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 really the question is don't mess this up coach Hambly right you got a good thing going already come in and keep it going so talk us about some of the ups and downs you have in terms of leadership and culture when you got got there in 2017 the things you dealt with in your first year or so as you you try to keep a successful culture going but you're your own leader so you also have to develop your own culture for your leadership style yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, it's a great question. And for the first thing Bernard said to me, because they won the year before I got here, of course, was like, all you have to do is just do what you did last year and you'll be fine. So like, there's no pressure, <laughs> you know, like, and Bernard, Bernard's awesome and has, you know, great perspective on uh, what, it, how hard it is to win national championships and all that. But it was a, it was a right. good joke. But anyway, um, yeah, I think the first year, you know, for me, uh, the, getting to know the players is a, is a really important thing. And um, like when you start talking about culture in order to really help kind of shape the culture, I feel like we, we really need to get to know all the people that are involved in the culture and especially the athletes. And, um, I came into, when I came into the group in 17, like full disclosure, I, I don't think I did a really good job with the culture. I was trying to get some things going, but I, I felt like it was, um, it was a little bit of a struggle for me because I just didn't know the players well enough and I couldn't, I didn't get to know them in a way where I could kind of push the right buttons with it. And so uh, it was pretty frustrating because I, you know, like I, the culture, when you talk about culture, a lot of people talk about um, like, you know, when I was going through the, the hiring process, they were asking me, so what does your culture look like? And I thought that was a really interesting question because I, I don't think I imprint culture on a program. I think I bring principles to what I think is an effective culture. And then the people that are part of that, most of the athletes, kind of make those principles their own and embody those principles and, and maybe add principles to that or help me change those principles. So I think for me, the first year, one of the reasons why, in my opinion, we didn't win was because I couldn't get to know the players well enough to kind of help guide that process. And it took us a, a year to get that done. And if I look back, I would have liked to have kind of fast tracked that in some way and maybe try to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, but I, I, I think that was frustrating just because it's, I've always felt like the players don't care how much you know unless they know how much you care. And so um, I couldn't get to that. Yeah. How did you work through that? I mean, that's, you know, that's an ongoing issue, right? You want to get to know the players and obviously you got to, well, you know, I worked with football coaches a long time and coaches always say I had to get my guys in, right? But 
you get in there and they already know how to win. This is a high level team you walked into. So tell me how, how you got through that challenge, because, you know, it sounds like you said it took a little longer than you wanted it to. But how did you work through that? Yeah, vulner- vulnerability and honesty from my standpoint. I just said, like, when we got back and, you know, we, we finished our season over Christmas break and we lost in the semifinals to Florida and then everyone scatters, you know, and goes home. First meeting we got back, I just said, I was just honest and vulnerable with them. I said, look, I didn't do a good enough job with you guys. Um, I need to do a better job of imprinting the culture. And here are the things I started to lay out, the things that I thought we were missing. We talked to the principals, but I, I wasn't holding them accountable to that, and I wasn't developing them the way that I wanted to. And, and then, then we, we talked about it, and I was very open, and they were, they were um, eager to, you know, after they lost, certainly e- more eager than they would have been maybe if we won to change those things. And uh, we got to work, you know, starting to work on uh, how we communicated together, kind of how we eliminate drama from our, from our program. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just, mostly it was just about just being honest and open, and they were very eager to make change. And it went pretty smoothly after that, to be honest. Ended up being pretty successful. Do you think that it had something to do with the pressure of taking over a program that just won a national championship, a successful athletics department? Do you think that is what the built the – I guess the big challenge was in terms of getting to know the, the players. I mean, obviously that yeah. was very important to you and you realized it as you, as you worked through the season. I don't think the I don't think it was the pressure. I think, you know, I was leaving, I came from a different culture where we were at Illinois, where we were a program that was kind of cyclical as far as our success. And I think it'll be that way because you get good athletes and you train them and then if you can have some good years, but this one, they were just so used to winning. And so I was, I, instead of just coming in and saying, Hey, here's how I think we need to win a national championship. You know, they, they had done that. I was kind of sitting back and watching how other people did it and how, what they did in the past and like allowing them to kind of guide it and see, see what it needed to be at, at Stanford as opposed to what it needed to be at Illinois. Cause the culture at Illinois, like the principles are the same, but the cultures are different because the people are different. It's a different kind of student here. But I, I wouldn't say it was the pressure. It was more of, it was more of like, Hey, these guys have done it. So I kind of want to, sit back and see and then about three quarters way through the season I was like no this is this isn't working for me it's not working for my coaching style and I knew then that we were going to be in trouble and it was just too late you know I needed I needed some time to kind of catch up on that I hope that makes sense it does it's interesting and then obviously you still made it to the final four or the uh, semifinals is what they call it in, vo- in volleyball so but you turned it around and uh, next two seasons you win the national title so I imagine if there were some young girls on the team when you first took over, had grown to either juniors or seniors by the time last you finished last season and won the title, they probably saw some of the differences. Do you think any of them – I try to think about as a student athlete and are you thinking about culture at that time? Are you thinking about leadership or our coach's leadership style? Did you ever hear from any of them now that they have either moved on or they're coming into their senior season or they've graduated and moved on in terms of the, the transition you made from back then to where the team is now? Yeah, I mean, the the second year, my second year in 18, that, there was a lot of conversations about how much more they liked the culture, you know, how it, how it, there was less drama. They were more honest and open with everybody, with each other. And um, I just had a meeting just before I hopped on this uh, call with you where I was meeting with my, my lone senior from who was a freshman that first year. And we were talking about that. And that's the one thing that we were talking about most is like, you know, we're trying to shape a new culture here with this new group. And she was talking about how bad it was in 17 and like how much it changed and how much they grew and what they've learned from it, you know, like how to communicate, how to be honest, like what real honesty looks like, you know, like, and, and you can do that in a way that's not confront, like always confrontational if it's received the right way. And, Really, really, truly being honest about where you are is really hard, especially for 18, 19 year olds. But I think that's the thing that, you know, when talking to this 21 year old that's sitting there who's mature for her age, and that's the thing she's talking about. It's like, we just have to make sure we're really honest. And we have a very, very young group. We have 10 sophomores and freshmen on our team right now. And her and I were just talking about how do we imprint that knowledge on them right now. And then, and she's eager to make that change because she knows what it's like when we don't. So, um, but every kid, every athlete that I've talked to that went through when the culture wasn't good to what it is now have all expressed just how that's the difference. That's the difference between being a championship team and not being a championship team. It's not talent. It's all about the culture. 
I imagine those those conversations with the senior talking about, okay, let coach, how are we going to do this for this this squad we have this year? It has to be a rewarding conversation uh, for a coach leadership like like yourself. Yeah, well, she gets it right, so that's the part that's exciting is that, and then and then you know she's willing to do the work if she she's calling the meeting with me to have that meeting. You know she's willing to do the work, and that that's of course really exciting, but also necessary I think too. Like you have to you have to in, in my opinion. The best way I can lead is that to, uh, I don't know, educate and tr- teach my leaders how to be great leaders where they can make the program their own. And certainly our seniors last year felt that way. And I, I'm excited because my se- my one senior this year, she already feels that way, as do the juniors that are, that are looking to kind of take over the leadership roles in our program. They look like it's their program and they're taking care of it. And to me, if that's happening, then I'm doing my job the right way. Which is excellent. So a good friend of mine, his name is Jeremiah Tiffin. He's a head volleyball coach at University of North Dakota. And he told me, when I, when I mentioned to him that I was going to have you on, I was like, well, tell me what I should pull out of him. Sure. And he was like, well, you definitely want to talk about organizational culture and leading a successful team. So we've talked about that. And he, and he also talked, and I, and I followed him. We were in grad school together. Mm. And so I saw him he was, when he was doing club volleyball. He became the head coach at a junior college team, became an assistant at Baylor, and went on to become a head coach at the NAI team. Now he's head coach in Division One, and obviously building his career. And one of his things, he, he used to help me at the American Football Coaches Association National Convention. Mm. So professionalism was important to him. He saw how the coaches carried themselves, saw how the association carried themselves, and, and tried to grow it. And he's always, he has always talked about uh, women and minorities in the profession. And I know that is something that is important to you in terms of the volleyball coaching profession, and you look at the makeup of the girls who play, and it's a, it's a diverse makeup, but then you look at the people who are coaching the position, and it's not as diverse as people would like it to be. And I know that's important to you, and I think you have a program where you're trying to grow the pipeline of people of color in the volleyball coaching profession. Talk to me about that, how you're doing that, and why that's important to you. Yeah, well, I mean, I think um, obviously with everything that's happening with the social injustice, and it's really brought this to light where I feel like there's some ideas that we've been t- talking about, a few of us coaches, but like with all of this, we feel like it's just time that we have to start helping. And this doesn't solve the problem of the social injustice, but it, at least it's on people's minds where we can get uh, people behind this. But one of the things that we talked about, like with the problem in coaching is a lot of times when it's about the hiring process, we've always looked at that. And there's some really cool rules, like the WCC just came out with that rule where um, they have to interview a minority, which I think is a great rule uh but like for a lot of us coaches or a lot for a lot of coaches that are um head coaches looking to hire assistants in some of those entry level positions as opposed to wcc where they're looking to hire head coaches those ad's looking to hire head coaches we're looking to hire you know assistant coaches a lot of coaches i wouldn't say i wouldn't put myself in this category because i i I do know a lot of minority coaches just don't know a lot of minority coaches and so we like how do we how do we resolve that and so what we're working on doing right now at the Pac-12 is a diversity mentorship program, which is a year-long mentorship where we will connect some, a minority coach with a head coach in a program inside the Pac-12. And then with that, we're going to we're raising enough money where we can fly them out two times a year to come and hang out and be a part of the program and be around the team and to see what it's like to be a coach to and then. Uh, we're also going to have them work our camps, and then we're going to go to the convention. We're going to go to the convention with them and introduce them to all the right people that we need to introduce them. So the thinking is, is like teach them the skills necessary to be a coach. Let them see what the expectations are for being a coach, and then help them so that when we get to the convention, which is where most of the hiring happens in our sport, at least the the, the introductions that are going to hire, happen in hiring take place at that convention, where we're going to go and spend time with our mentees. Uh, at that point and almost like our, I feel like part of our staff and we can go help them make the connections necessary to get into coaching, you know? And so I think we're all really excited about it. We've, we're, we've raised half the money right now. We're working on it. We're, it's like $15,000, you know, for us. I know that's like maybe compared to some of the basketball coaches are throwing around, uh, not the same amount of money, but for us, we can, we feel like for that amount of money, we can pull off an incredible program and really have an impact on, really, really have an impact on creating more candidates that are um, prepared to be in the diverse candidates that are prepared to get into the coaching ranks. I think 
a lot of there's been a lot of opportunities for scholarships to go to our convention and all that stuff. And that's a great program. But from those candidates that I've talked to that have been a part of that are going to the convention, they don't feel like they have had the skills necessary where they can represent themselves in a way to actually get a to get a job. And so we're hoping to kind of overcome that. All right now, are these assistant coaches who are already in the profession, or these graduate assistants, are are women who just finished playing and want to get in, or are all, all men, I guess, who want to coach? All, yeah, I mean, all of the above. Whatever, whatever. It's going to be. We got a, you know, we got a, a group that's going to decide who the top candidates are, and this is something we hope to do for. We don't. We didn't put a time on it for in perpetuity, and so I think um, for us, like, and we're also hoping it spreads, you know, to other conferences. I know we just got a proposal out there and the big Ten's looking at doing something and WCC is looking at doing something. And I know the Ohio Valley is looking at doing it. So we're hoping this program spreads and the AVCA, which is our coaches association is hundred percent on board, but um, we're open to any candidates, uh, no age limits. You know, of course it would be great if it was some former athletes from um, and the, some of the things we want to target is some of our former athletes. Uh, and then we also want to uh, target some of the um, historically black colleges and universities and, and see if we can get those guys involved. So, um, you know, when we get together and we start to put our group together to make those decisions about who those, who those top candidates are, that's kind of where we're going to target, but we're open to just the best candidates that we feel like could, we could help the most really. All right. So they'll, so they'll get an aspect of understanding organizational culture and leadership in the two visits when they go, I guess, for the lack of a better word, shadow a head coach on campus. Right. Yeah. There's, I left a couple other things out where we're going to do this uh, impact, like this coaching thing. Uh, True North is, uh, we're partnering with True North where they're going to teach kind of how to manage yourself. So, like, that's a six week course they're going to be able to take. And then we're also going to do bi monthly Zooms, one with your head coach that's your mentee or an assistant coach. And then another head coach from our conference that's going to kind of, we're going to work through topics that they're going to share. So, it's, there's a lot going on there. So, I mean, I, I guess in, for the interest of time, I didn't want to go through all the things, but I, I like, those things are some more mentee mentorship opportunities and the, the whole group, all the mentees will be a part of those Zoom calls. If you were to identify in the, I guess the best outcome would be somebody getting into coaching and become a head coach at some point in the future. But is the entirety of the program broken down into uh, pillars or some type of principle? Like here you'll learn, this is the leadership aspect. This is running the team. Here's the professionalism aspect. Here's the networking aspect here. You know, you know what I mean? Cause it sounds like you hit some of those things in the few details that you've given me so far. I and mean, I think you touched it. I mean, it's, it is that it's, I mean, we haven't created like that kind of the pillars or have something official, but it's basically like develop relationships with more uh, minority coaches or head coaches and programs develop relationships with more minority coaches because we all know we hire who we know and we also we recommend who we know um, to educate and develop coaches to be prepared and understand what the profession is and then to create in more um, networking opportunities for them and um, yeah I mean I think those are the three things that we we targeted and we felt like were the most important things to help bring a more diverse pool of candidates to the to the volleyball coaching world. Right, it is. And then once they once they get in, then it becomes about, OK, here's how you successfully lead. Right. Here's how you successfully present yourself. It's, it's interesting. I it's a, I did a lot of the, that type of stuff when I worked with the American Football Coaches Association. Of course, Coach Tab, who was the executive director, was all about that type of thing. Professionalism. Let's try to get more coaches opportunities. Let's you know, all those type, types of things. And, and I know uh, Kathy DeBoer had her on the podcast. Of course, she's a a Spartan like I am, Michigan State in the Big right. Ten, and that's right. kind of how we how we connected. But but she's been there a long time, and you mentioned she's a she's involved in it and a part of it. Tell me about their aspect of because they could provide support in terms of the network of coaches who are at the convention or or providing uh, hotel rooms or you know th- those kind of things. Talk well, to me about their involvement. Yeah, they they are donating the the a membership and a uh, the convention fee for that uh for the for our convention which is a you know as i mentioned a huge place to get hired and to network and all that stuff as well as they have programming at the convention that's um, unique to uh, a diversity scholarship program that they've developed over the years um this is this we look at as a supplement to that the diversity scholarship program is a, is a great program that's going on at the abca we're looking at this as a supplement to that kind of a robust supplement to help them prepare so when they get into that and they network with other 
minority coaches from all across the country uh, and that they've been working with that, we can hopefully have a better shot to be prepared for that job. I think that's a challenge that we've heard is that when people actually get the job, sometimes they haven't been prepared and that we want to help as much as we can with that as well. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Like you mentioned, when you took the job at Stanford the first year, the challenge of you're never going to know how to be a head coach or even in the athletic director chair. I mean, once you get there, it's, you know, you're trying to catch a train that's already moving, right? You're trying to hop on a fast moving train, but but that's a challenge, right? Do, do you Are you prepared to understand how to make tough decisions? Are you prepared to deal with resistance that may come from players? Are you prepared to deal with administration? Are you, you know, hiring your coaches? What about if you got a coach that might say something a little different than what you, I mean, those kind of things. So there's a, there's a whole lot you have to deal with. And, and I think the experience you're going to give them will be great. And, and another thing that will be great as, as we talk through this, you said there will be Zoom meetings. Now, what we did with the AFCA was, right, you, you mentored them at the convention and you might have talked on the phone or you go work a camp or a clinic, but that was about it, right? And you probably talked on the phone, but what the pan, the outcome of the pandemic is like, well, with the Zoom thing, there's a whole, it's a yeah. whole another aspect of a touch point, right? In terms right. of communicating with people. So that, that brings a great aspect to it where you can, at any given moment, you know what I mean? They can get on and you can do some type of mentoring or networking, or they can actually see how you're handling a situation as the head coach, I think. Right. And that's, that's, that's what we talked about with our head coaches. So like they get a chance to talk to their mentee all the time. But then there's there's six other great coaches in the Pac-12 that they're going to be able to connect with, you know, and and learn from them. And they, they have a different way of going about it and allow them, you know, an hour, uh, 90 minutes to really talk through what the profession is to those coaches and what are the lessons that they learned. And we just feel like the as broad as we can make that educational opportunity, the better it is going to be for these mentees. Yeah. Well, Coach, it sounds like an excellent program. I'm, I'm sure the people who participated participate who are participating in it are uh probably very happy to see that you're somebody of your stature um and the success you've had is participating in it so that means it's when somebody like you participates in it type of program like this that means it's important to the profession as opposed to just a certain people who haven't for lack of a better word had the success you have but when you're participating in it that means it's important to the profession so i'm, I'm uh, sure I, I can we have a bunch of great coaches in the pac-12 and they all are really eager to be a part of it Every single one of them was excited to do it. So that's that. It's really cool to see people that we recognize the problem and are willing to do what it takes to make some change. Be a part of it. Well, that's excellent, Coach. I, I appreciate you coming on and telling us about the, uh, the the program you're in, and I think it sounds like it's going to be a success. I hope so. We're, we're hoping so. We'll do the best we can. So, but I appreciate you allowing me to come on and talk about that. Thanks a lot. That was Coach Kevin Hambly. He's the head volleyball coach at Stanford University, and of course, this is Ty Brown with one question. And keep in mind, the role of a leader is to create and maintain an environment that people want to be a part of. And as always, be better tomorrow than you are today. This episode of the One Question Leadership Podcast is produced by Spades Media Group, solving problems using creative leadership.